how to make people laugh. This is not how to be funny. That's a different class. This is how to make people laugh. Why real estate investors should learn the skill of laughter and how it will build your business influence and compliance gaining ability. Aza Mayo rhymes with KO here at BigRia.com. Go to BigRia, number one world, number one channel on YouTube for Indiana Real Estate. We're building the world's largest organization, special needs business owners and real estate investors, all kinds of crazy stuff. We are creating the world's clearest instructions and how anyone can go from zero to 30 grand a month. The benefits of laughter are enormous. Did you know? Endorsed by groups like Mayo Clinic, Oxford, Harvard, et cetera. It helps with respiration, muscle stimulation, stress response, immune system, communication, overall mood stabilizing, blood circulation. By the way, real quick note here, we do this, we started doing this as therapy for our heroes, our special needs heroes. If you don't know, we work with people with all manner of um, handicaps, mental illness, terminal illness, addiction, all those things fall under the SPED, the special education or special needs category, right? What I'm about to talk about today is a very unique form of therapy. This is a real thing and this is bonkers. So many people have been asking me about how to make a class like this. It's crazy. I can hardly talk about it without laughing. I promise you, you do these exercises, you, this will be one of the most enjoyable classes videos you ever go through. I mean that very sincerely. Like it, you won't even know why you're laughing. Follow through with the exercise. Okay. I promise you, this is, this is good stuff. I promise you stay with me, follow through. You'll love it. Okay. So, and what does this help with? It helps with all kinds of stuff, blood circulation, heart rate, pain relief. It's like a natural painkillers. Your body's endorphins, uh, endorphin release, oxygen use, looking younger, sleeping better, weight loss, improve relationships, confidence, and more. Maybe you could potentially look as sexy as Aza. Man, who said that? That's not possible but you could get close. Helps with bonding, likability, conflict resolution, teamwork, charisma, empathy, all kinds of crazy stuff. Do you need more reason to laugh? You need to laugh more. Everybody does. Oh, awesome. If you knew my life, there's nothing to laugh about. When you, if you know anything about the heroes we work with, the people we work with, these are the people who have less to laugh about than anybody else. And yet they're laughing their ass off and it gives them a superpower. It's really pretty remarkable. Okay. So remember all the smile studies, brilliance, the smile studies, this idea that we go out, you make people smile, you tell the story. We have, the, oh my goodness gracious. We've got to build companies around just smiling. We have a whole class in this. You can look it up. Go to bigria.com. It's somewhere there. Smile studies. This was the idea that you make somebody smile just by smiling. You immediately increase your mood. You increase the mood of other people. And when you smile and you have a great big smile, it has other people smile too. This process, the whole GXM and SS, the smile studies and the goodwill experiments model, this process of the whole thing of, you know, being, uh, you know, spreading joy, this whole process of laughing is all the smile studies on crack. It's the smile studies squared. It's quantum leaps beyond the smile study. So if you're familiar with that, this is that times about a trillion, right? This is very cool stuff. Okay. So the skill of laughter and how it will build your business influence and compliance gaining. So a few thoughts on laughter here, a few quotes, just to, these are some of the quotes we've been using kind of our high frequency thinking on this. These are all things that we've gotten out the wall. You guys put this up on the wall. We've used these on boards all over the place here. Laughter is the language of the soul. Neruda, a day without laughter is a day wasted. Charlie Chaplin, laughter is and always will be the best form of therapy. Audrey Hepburn, there's nothing in the world so irresistibly contagious as laughter. Charles Dickens, we don't laugh because we're happy. We're happy because we laugh. William James, we talk a lot about him, the father of American psychology. He was going to go kill himself one day. He saw a slave. I talk about this story all the time. He he, taught, he, he had back spasms, health issues, problems with his father, alcoholism, all kinds of crazy stuff. He was going to kill himself. He saw a freed slave who went out and had made himself a millionaire. And the slave said the secret to doing that is to take responsibility for everything. He decided that day, instead of killing himself, I'm going to go one year and take full responsibility for everything in my life. It changed his life so much. He realized that by thought control, he did not call it that, but you can change anything in your life. I've went on to start the entire psychological movement in America. He's the father of American psychology. We don't laugh because we're happy. We're happy because we laugh. We're going to talk more about that in a second because most people think, oh, well, I'd laugh if I was happy, but actually laughing can make you happy as you're going to experience in a second. The secret of a long life, laughter. The secret of, the secret of a long lasting relationship, laughing together, China. And if you can't trust China, I mean, come on. Laughter connects you with people. It's almost impossible to maintain any kind of distance or any sense of social hierarchy when you're just howling with laughter. Laughter is a force for democracy, John. Please, very brilliant. Very cool stuff here. Okay, so this all started with a experiment we were doing. We do all kinds of stuff. I, unlike many people who shun our stuff, the Mill Brooks spectrum, and all our people would be like, oh, that's just, um, the, it, why does it have to be involved with capitalism? Why do you have to make money? Why does it, all this other stuff, all these people we get around us that there's not that many, but in the world of academia, they sometimes don't take me seriously. Is it my helmet? What is it? I don't know. But some of them, pe don't, they don't take our stuff seriously. No one can argue with our results, though. We get better results than any of the other people altogether because we're actually trying to accomplish something. We're trying to build something, trying to build business. But I will try any form of therapy, especially because we have a lot of people who are not, a lot of our heroes are not building businesses. They're not doing stuff. They're not even, you know, mental, they'd have mental cognitive issues. They have delays and processing, all kinds of stuff. So I'm, I'm up for any type of laughter, anything that will help in any way, right? And you would think everybody would be like that. I mean, why would you not be like that, right? That's the way to be. But some people are very close-minded. They don't want to go through stuff. So there's this idea of yoga laughter. It started in India as yoga did in general. And this is the, the process where you 
basically, the point is to fake laugh and then maybe it becomes real. So you just start faking it. You just, ha ha, you just act like you're faking it and you keep going. So we started using this in our therapy sessions and then we modified it pretty dramatically. So what we do is a lot different than what they're doing. We call quantum laughter. Who came up with that? Quantum laughter. Everything is quantum something. It sounds really cool. Um, quantum laughter is what we came up with and it's as our approach. So there's a few different ways to do this. I want you to try these experiments for a second. And if you just do it, even no matter where you are, especially if people are around, it's going to be more awkward. And that's going to create the laughter, the hysteria. Remember, I talked about all the benefits of laughter. It is nearly impossible to maintain your mood if you're in a shitty mood, if you just start laughing, right? But most people are like, oh, I don't have anything to laugh about, right? It's so much work to be down, right? You got to change your body. You got to change what you're thinking, doing, saying, our power triangle, think they think they do, and change any one of those things. And you immediately change the other two. And it changes your mood instantly. Remember, the biggest secret that we teach is thought control. At any given moment, change what you're thinking, doing, saying, you immediately change the direction of your life and the results you get. Your capacity to achieve comes down to your ability to control your thoughts because that controls how you feel and controls what you do. So being able to laugh might seem like a BS thing, like, oh, awesome, I'm just laughing at nothing. But the ability to make yourself do it, it's to a point, notice I'm not really even faking laughing anymore because it's to a point now where I don't even know if I can fake laugh without actually starting to laugh. It's pretty crazy. I promise you, you go, you go these exercises and this will happen to you and you'll have no reason for it. You'll be laughing for no reason. So how heroes master quantum laughing. First, but one, there's a couple exercises you want to do. First, isolate and catalog funny anchors that always work. So go through your life. It doesn't matter how politically incorrect or terrible or whatever. Don't worry about that. Just go through your life and pick out things that always make you laugh, right? And just have those right at the forefront. Come up with three to five of these things that instantly get you up. It's like our hierarchy of thought, high frequency thoughts. Go through our class on quantum physics. We also talk about this in a whole bunch of other places. You should be familiar with the thought ladder and our hierarchy of, 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 of frequency of thoughts, right? And this is the base basis behind all everything we teach, right? Is to raise your frequency of thinking. You can do that in seconds and the more you do it, the easier it becomes to do. Funny is being the same way. One of the biggest secrets, look at someone like Stephen Colbert or John Stewart or these like masters of comedy like Dave Chappelle. When they interview somebody or they get around somebody who's like a politician or someone who's not so funny, you watch them, you watch a master of humor, master of comedy. And when they're around people, you're like, I didn't know that guy was funny. That guy's not funny. But that's how someone who's a master, like who's masterfully skilled at humor and being funny, they make everyone around them funny. And one of the best ways of doing that is to laugh, is to make people feel like they're funny and they'll think you're funny. So to find the humor and everything. So first have these funny anchors. You should have things throughout your life that you use. People always ask me, I knew you were gonna ask me, she's gonna ask me mine. I don't wanna get into mine because I'm gonna start cracking up too much, but there's one I've used for years. Of, one, well, I mean, I've had this on my mind for a while. It happened years ago, but I use it more now because every single time I think about it, it always gets me. So there is this woman named Nancy Grace. She's a terrible human being. She's an ambulance chasing turd. She must be responsible for at least half the kidnappings in America. There's a there's a, a clip for The Onion, a spoof of her, of a woman just like her. It's like, I'm, I'm trying to find these little girls that are missing. And it turns out she's the one kidnapping them and she breaks into random people's houses. She causes more problems than she solves. She's just a real, like, just, you know, one of those kinds of people, like a tabloid type of person. So there was this guy, this couple, and they had this kid who apparently was like a really shitty kid. And so this is the backstory. This is what we found out later. And they kept telling him, I think he got a couple girls pregnant and he was selling drugs. He was like 13, 14 years old. And like, listen, if you don't stop it, we're going to chain you in the basement. And he's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not. You won't do shit. You're not going to do nothing. And one day they're like, you know what? That's it. They chained him in the basement and they kept him there. This is according to them. But the, the kid, it seems like this is partly true, at least some of it. Um, So they chained him in the basement. And then one of the parents was like, hey, I haven't seen little Billy. Where's little Billy? And they're like, ah, uh, he must have ran away again. You know, what are you going to do? Like, oh, he ran away again. But it's how long has it been? Like, I don't know, a couple of days, like a couple of days. Well, we need to call the cops. They pick up the phone, call the cops. Like, oh, I would. Then the cops get called. The cops come like, hey, how long have they been gone? How long's little Billy been gone? Like, ah, uh, a couple, two, three, four days. Like, four, well, now it's an FBI issue. Next thing you know, they're on the news, you know, uh, negotiating, pleading with the kidnappers about their missing, you know, to bring back our missing boy, you know. So that's what they say, that they got, they just got out of hand. That's what they say. But nobody knew that this whole backstory, right? So there's this, it's a great clip where Nancy Grace is on the show and she has this guy on her show and she's like in the middle of the interview, he's talking about, please bring back my boy. He's young and we love him, blah, blah, blah. Nancy's like, it turns out, excuse me, that uh, your son was found in uh, your basement. And they click to the guy who does the worst job you've ever seen of acting when he tries to act surprised. He's like, what? what? what my baby, my boy, <laughs> you gotta go watch it. So I, I was gonna use a clip, but I don't wanna get caught. We're getting copyright strikes now. We fight him and we win, but people are coming, you know, coming after us. So coming after Big Rhea, it doesn't matter. We'll win, we'll beat them all. But I, I don't wanna use that clip. Uh, we'll put a link in the description below. But it's a, it's a clip that I think about constantly. I think about this whenever I need to get there. It's one of my anchors, there's several others, but you need to have a series of those anchors, right? That always get you, even just thinking about it, cracks you up. So start, collect those, right? That's one. Use anchors to begin fake laughing. So start what's called fake laughing that eventually turns into real genuine laughter. Now, when you do this, you're gonna do this with me right now. Now, the reason you're gonna be weird about it is because of your ego, but that's one of the 
the whole points of yoga, the whole points of spirituality. Check your ego at the door, especially if you're around other people. What's killing you is your ego. We need to suppress the ego and leave the ego only when you, the highest plane of consciousness is always when the ego is at its smallest or its most non-existent point, right? So that's what you need to create when we're talking about fake laughter. So we start with fake laughter. I want you to do this with me, okay? So you can start, we do two or three rounds of fake laughing, right? And eventually you do it until you actually have real laughter, okay? So don't think about the Nancy Grace thing. Don't think about that guy who's like, my boy, my boy, where's <laughs> He doesn't even get up to, to talk. He doesn't even get up to get on the phone. He continues to finish the interview. We just found your missing son in your basement. He's like, what? <laughs> and then he continues the interview. It's crazy. Okay, use, so start with fake laughter. So come up with something right now. Do this with me right now. Think of something that always makes you laugh. The harder it is for you to think about that, the more shitty of a person you are, man, because you should have these things ready to go right at the tip of your tongue. You should have these, not shitty, bro, I shouldn't say that. You're a great person. You're beautiful. I love you. But you get what I'm saying. When you're not doing that, when you're not exercising that part of your brain, those dendrites, that neuroplasticity is not modeled around laughter, around humor, around joy, then it's harder for you to get there, right? Because you built a dirt road there, but a super highway to being an LC or being miserable and down. So start building this. It's a little bit awkward. I'm giving you time to come up with something that's always funny to you, something that cracks you up every single time. Don't worry about how inappropriate it might be or how juvenile or immature or whatever. Think of something, right? You think I gave you the real, there's other ones that I have that are totally inappropriate. But think about that for a second. You got it. So now you've got a funny anchor that kind of puts you in the mood, right? It kind of frames things. You're a little bit laughing. You like every time you think about it, you laugh, you smile, you crack up a little bit, right? That's where we're at, right? Okay. So I'm I'm seriously going to try this with you. I'm genuinely going to try to fake laugh. This is how hard it is for me to just fake laugh without actually laughing. Okay. So we're going to do this together. So we're just going to go very bland, very generic. Keep your eyes, dead eyes, like you're looking at a fighter, a prize fighter about getting the ring. Okay. So do this with me. You've got your funny anchor now. You are going to go from fake laughter to real laughter. Okay. Now, if you haven't done this very while, for a while, it's going to take you a while to get to real laughter. But the more you get there, the quicker you'll get there. The more you do this, the quicker you'll get there. So here we go. Fake laughter. Do it with me. Okay. Forget your ego, right? Stay with me. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> okay. okay. We'll try it again. Try it again. That was terrible. I can do better. I can do better. I can stop. If you keep, if you start laughing, I'm going to lose it. I got to lose it. <laughs> I don't lose it. No, don't. I don't. Okay. Don't everyone close your eyes. So you guys got, I'm not going to be, oh man. Okay. I'm going to close. Okay. Here we go. Second try. Fake laughing with me. Here we go. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We're going to try again. I'm going to really seriously try hard to keep the fake laughter. Keep it with me. Okay. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> these these people are terrible. How can I work like this? Okay, the point, it's really it becomes very difficult to fake laugh, okay? You need a fake laugh. You need a fake laugh. Stay with it. Forget the ego. Wherever you are, laugh. Okay, try to fake laugh. Do a better, do a better job than I did. Think of your funny anchor. Use that at feel at first, right? Because that's going to first get you there. Eventually, you're not going to need the anchor. I'm telling you, as soon as you start laughing, you're just going to laugh uncontrollably. So that's the first thing. Start the fake laughter and go through this exercise at least two, three times a day. Anytime you start feeling like a shit ball, go through it, get the fake laughter going, right? So that's where we are. We have our anchor. We have our fake laughter. You should have done it. If you didn't do it, this is going to be really, really awkward, right? You had to do that. Do it with me. Okay. You did that. You should have done that with me. Okay. Now, number three, we do this. This is something we do in, a, in group, but it's something you should do as well. Take your biggest fears and bad stuff and explain it with forced laughing. This is some crazy shit, man. <laughs> Stop. No. So this is where you take, take what you're most concerned about with right now. Like, oh my gosh, I, I hope my husband's not cheating on me. Ha ha ha. Like try, say terrible fears, your deepest, darkest fears. Say stuff that's awful. I, you know, I'm, I have stage three cancer. Ha 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 ha. Like say it like that. Okay. I know this is crazy. I get it. This is what we've done. It's a remarkable thing where you say awful stuff, but you say it with fake laughter. Just fake laughter. Ha 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 ha. And what you'll find, I promise you, we've done this now with maybe a thousand people is eventually it'll turn into genuine and laughter. You'll start talking about terrible things, things you're afraid of, like, oh, I think my wife is cheating on me or whatever. And you say it with laughter. And when people hear you, they start cracking up and then you crack up. It becomes a cyclical thing. This is how you take the power you take as the Aust Australians say, you take the piss out of things by laughing through them, right? I've been doing this so much that honestly, it's hard for me to say anything with like, when the biggest thing you, the, you are at your best when you feel the largest, right? When you're the biggest, you're the strongest and your problems ain't no thing, right? How do you get there? What, what better way to get there than laughing at your problems? This ain't no thing, man. Oh my gosh, this ain't no thing. You're just laughing through it, right? The more you can laugh through life, the more that you'll live, the more that you'll, the easier things will be. Okay. So these are some of the, the way we've mastered quantum laughing, right? First have your anchors, go through the fake laughter, look in a mirror and just, just sit there. I know it's all, do it, do it, do it. Record the video, send it to me. We'll put it up in a, in a class. So just sit there. Ha ha ha. And you'll eventually, you'll get to real laughter. And you're, you're laughing about nothing. It's crazy, but you're laughing. Genuine laughter, okay? So take your, big, take your biggest fears. Okay, 
so we just explained that. Four, here's another one. We have, we've been doing this a lot now. We have laugh offs, a laugh battle. So anytime somebody seems down or mopey, they start shitballing. And anytime someone's being any kind of like weirdness or like, oh God, wah, wah, you know, as soon as you hear anyone do that, anytime someone starts the ha ha ha. So we've done this now with our heroes now. It's a, if you come in, it's completely bonkers. It's just if somebody says something or somebody hears bad news, let's say you hear bad news and you're feeling down. You just start going ha ha ha. Or let's see, you see somebody who's down. You just start going ha 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 towards the, <laughs> towards the direction. And anytime somebody hears someone do that, if you're within the vicinity, you're the closest person, you have to respond. You have to match and raise the bar. So if they said ha ha ha, you say ha 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 and you raise it a little bit and they go back and then they go back and we have our, our, our laugh battle, like a rap battle, right? We have a laugh off and then other people get involved and pretty soon everybody's cracking up and nobody knows what happened. There's like nothing that happened. So we had one of our heroes had just done this with he had... <laughs> No, one of our, I gotta stop. What of our, no, the, my gosh, I gotta stop. I get, I'm worse than anybody, man. When you start laughing uncontrollably for no reason, it's like one of the craziest things in the world. I promise you guys, if you don't be an LC about this, try this, okay? Try this. Don't stop until you actually get to real, genuine laughter. And of course, at first, you've got something that you're actually laughing about, but eventually, you'll have nothing. You'll have nothing that you're laughing about. In the case here, we had our laugh battles. This just happened yesterday. One of our heroes has actually um, had to go through chemo and he hated it. And he's like, I gotta go through chemo. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Somebody else started going ha ha ha. Pretty soon the whole room, we're all like hysterically laughing like ha <laughs> It's really like genuinely funny. We start with fake laughter, we get to real laughter. And one of the other teachers had walked in and said, what's so funny? And he's like, I have to go to chemo. <laughs> and she's like, what the fuck? Like, what's wrong with it? We, like, how do you take something awful like that and laugh at it? And there's more to that story. I'll tell you, uh, is, are we going to talk about that later? Because that's one of my favorite stories ever. I got to come back to that. If we didn't, did you guys put this down? If we didn't put it in there. So what happens now is that you get there. This is taking the longest. I don't know how much we're going to have to cut out of this class, man. I honestly, when I start, and it's like this with everybody, you will just stay there. You'll laugh uncontrollably. You won't be able to stop yourself and nothing is happening. You're able to instantly bring this joy into your life and you're able to stay there. You're able it's, it, at will. You can just bring yourself right up. Anytime you want to laugh hysterically, you want to laugh uncontrollably, you want to have a great time, start with the fake laughter and eventually I, it'll get to real, genuine laugh. It's it's an amazing thing. It's really a remarkable thing that we've been doing this. We've had this now with our heroes. And like I said, if you know their situations, these are, you know, people that are going through, you don't have any problems, believe me. Um, Now, when you get there to this place, high frequency thinking, the, the laughter, the humor place, you'll be, able to you'll be able to get there regularly at the drop of a hat. You'll be able to stay there. But most importantly, you'll be able to bring p other people as well. One of the facts fastest ways to do this, the easiest way to make people laugh is to start laugh <laughs> laughing yourself. I know this sounds crazy, but when we, we've started, we've been doing these experiments now. Start a conversation when you're laughing. Hi, I'm calling about the house for sale. And immediately you'll see people not only smile, but they'll start to like, yeah, you know, they'll start to immediately mirror you. We all follow the leader and the person with the most emotion, the person who brings the most energy, the most enthusiasm to a conversation is immediately who we follow. We've all had someone who walks up to us like, hi, how are you? And you're like, oh, I'm great. How are you? You're not like that, but that's what they bring out of you. That's what you want to be. That marionette, the pulls people up, right? I'm not. I'm not even going to look over there. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop. This is going to take forever. All right. I got to get going. We got to finish this off here. The purpose of doing this. What's the purpose of laughing, right? First, it brings a hero up and it brings the hero out of you, right? It brings you in a plateau. You're at a higher place. You're at a better place. You're always better when you're laughing. Everything's better with the laugh, right? Second, when we have, like when we work with our heroes or our people, we want to be able to bring them up quickly out of a state. When somebody hears something awful and terrible, oh my gosh, we immediately, ha 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 ha, immediately they pull up. Everyone gets out of this, right? So the other thing that a hero and you yourself will learn is that you'll be able to bring others up at will as well. Everyone has to follow those rules with a laugh, right? As soon as you hear someone faking the haha, you match them and go above them and then go back and forth. It becomes a battle. It becomes cyclical. It feeds itself. Third, it helps enormously with compliance, testing, gaining. Um, this is really, this is how we've been testing this now with our conversations. Here's some example experiments you can do to test the laugh effect. So when we have conversations, I always recommend that you should be between a five and a seven with your enthusiasm, right? That enthusiasm makes up for everything, remember. So when you're having your conversations, always be high, a little bit high, a little bit plastic, almost like, hey, how's it going? Like, you know, be in that mode. But when we start being at like the edge of laughter. So right at the edge of, so here's how I'd be if I had a normal conversation. Hey, how's it going? Like I'm a little excited, energetic, energetic. I'm enthusiastic. I love what I'm doing. I'm really passionate. It makes up for the fact that I might not know what I'm doing, but I really like it. I'm really excited about it, right? So that's where you want to be between a five to a seven normally, right? But when you are right at the edge of laughter, we've been testing this. So you'd be like, where's the laugh? Like a laugh is like, ha 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 ha, right? <laughs> right? So you want to be, oh my gosh, I got to finish this. You, this is going to take forever. How long has it been? Have you been tracking the time? I don't know how much this is going to have to cut out. All right. You're just making it worse for yourself. 
Okay, so here, focus. Look, the right at the edge of laughter would be like right around here. So if I'm like, I'm right, right around here. Hey, how's it going? Right? I started to laugh a little bit. That's where you want to be with your conversation. Start them right around the laugh, right around the laugh, right here. Hey, how's it going? It's great to meet you. Right? Like I'm laughing. I'm not laughing at, not like you're laughing at him, but be right there at the edge of laughter, right? Introduce yourself with that intro part with the laugh already in effect. Hey, how's it going? I'm calling about the home for sale. Yeah, great. A little bit of a laugh, right? A little bit of a laugh. Don't do it too much because then you just start cracking up. Like you look like a crazy person, like look like Joker. You have, you have to give out a card that says, hey, I'm crazy. I laugh for no reason. Look for the immediately lighting up and you'll see that people will match you immediately. You also see how this is the best way to be funny. The best way to get people to laugh is just laugh. You don't even need to say anything funny. If they say something even remotely funny, laugh at it. And what you'll find is that when, <laughs> once you start laughing, it'll be really contagious and it'll, it'll just it'll just feed itself like we talked about with the fake laughter. This also helps. One of the best things people look for is someone who makes them laugh. One of the top things people look for, you know, women, men, everyone tall, dark, handsome, you know, funny, smart. Uh, people always put funny in that in that description, right? So compliance, gaining, the, one of the top things we look at when we talk about just being attractive, you know, being somebody that people want to be around, pe being somebody that people want to work with. This is what humor does. This is what laughter does. You collect 77s faster, easier. You get more addicted. You enjoy the accumulation. Biggest factor in ultra high achieving is not work, hard work, discipline. It's addiction, enjoyment. And when you can create enjoyment out of nothing, when nothing is happening and you're just laughing your ass off, having a great time, imagine what happens when you can apply that to actual, actually things that are happening. The, the test here is to be able to have something neutral, something totally like, just look at like a bar of soap, look at a wall, look at a light switch, just look at any simple thing and be able to laugh hysterically, to enjoy that moment, to, to look at the ordinary and see the extraordinary, enjoy something pretty remarkable. And when you can do that, this is like really the secret to unlocking your potential, doing all kinds of wonderful things is being able to introduce and manufacture. At first it's fake enjoyment, but then it's actual enjoyment. This is, if you can, the reason, if people enjoy having conversations, if they'll enjoy collecting their 77s, if they enjoy building their business, they get addicted to it, they have wins, they want to set records every day. That's the secret to doing all this stuff. The heroes that get there, none of them look at it like work. They look at building their business like kids look at playing Fortnite or playing video games, playing Mario Kart. That's exactly the way they look at it. When we can get to that point, it's game over, man. It's just a beautiful place to be. So these are some experiments you can do. Those are some of the experiments you can do. A few quick stories. <laughs> okay, a few quick stories. Okay, is he included in this one? Okay, so is he? Oh, okay, they're the chemo. Okay, so first, um, one of our heroes uh, was an instructor and she was going through a rough patch in a relationship. And we were talking about, she was basically saying she was on the edge of like a mental breakdown. So she came to one of our um, our, our sessions and she, she started going through the laughter therapy. And she said, this is like the cool, she's like, I haven't laughed this much. I haven't even smiled in, you know, over a year. And it's been like the worst time of my life. And this is the first time I laughed. So she was doing this experiment. She went home and she would do this experiment, which you should be doing, right? You, you Are you doing the laughing? You better have done the laughing. Rewind this class. Please do it. I'm begging you. I promise you when I started doing this and we did this now with our heroes and all the, the man, we've got people dealing with unimaginable ugliness and oh man. And you have and to be able to do this has been one of the greatest gifts of my life to be able to immediately create this, this sensation, this enjoyment in other people. It's really something fantastic and spectacular. She was not in a case where she had some terminal illness, but she was one of our instructors. She went home and right in front, right at the foot of her bed was her, was her uh, mirror, right? With her, her dresser, her chest, her drawer, uh, whatever it's the, the mirror, right? On um, the top of her chest, her chest, the chest where you put clothes, the place where you put clothes and there's a mirror on top of it. So she was sitting at her bed and she was thinking about how miserable her life was. Her and her husband slept in different rooms. They had this really weird relationship and she was thinking this is just awful. And she started feeling herself getting down. So what she did, she looked in the mirror and she started doing the fake laughter and then eventually became real laughter. And she was looking in the mirror and she said, I had completely lost control. It was just attic. I couldn't stop laughing. I just sat there laughing, laughing. I was just having the time of my life. Husband, first time in over a year, like 18 months, he knocks on the door. He's like, hey, are you okay? Well, you, you know, you, you sound, you know, what's what's going on? What's so, and this is when you hear somebody laughing, by the way, when you see people laughing, what happens? What do we all want to do? We want to know what's so funny. What was the joke? What did I miss? What, right. And we're already like, we want to be at the edge of that laughter. What we like, we talk about in the dialogue. So it's like, hey, what, what did I miss? What was the joke? Right? We, we hate being left out. So he comes in, even though they've got this terrible relationship, right? He comes in, he's like, hey, you okay? And he's like looking around the room, like, what is it? Are you watching something on Netflix? Do you have something on TV? Did you drop something? Like, are you on the phone? What's what's so funny? And she sat there and she hadn't seen him in her room in a, in a while. And she was sitting there looking in the mirror. And she's like, I get how crazy this looks. And then thinking about how crazy it looks to him made me laugh even more. So she's sitting there trying to explain to her husband that she's just looking herself in the mirror. She's pointing to the mirror and he's like, looking at the mirror and he's like, yeah, what, what's what do you, what, what's what's so funny? And she's cracking up even more. She's trying to explain it, but she can't because she keeps laughing so hard. And then she he, she keeps laughing and he's like, are you okay? What's going on? He sits down next to her and he's like, okay, I'm looking at the mirror, but I'm not. And he's looking at her like this. And the more he did it, the more she laughed. She kept laughing. She's like, listen, just look at the mirror and fake laugh. Just try not to laugh. And so he looked at the mirror and he's like, okay. And he starts going the ha ha ha, like the fake laugh. And then he got to the real laugh. They both sat there looking at the mirror, cracking each other up, just doing nothing more but looking at the mirror and just laughing uncontrollably, just keep going back and forth with this laughter. And she said that he didn't say anything. They sat there for like 10 or 15 minutes laughing, looking at the mirror, laughing uncontrollably. And then he got up and
and he left. It was kind of awkward. And then the next night he came in and she was looking at the mirror laughing and she kind of moved her pillow so that he could sit down on the bed. He sat down next to her, looked in the mirror and they both just started laughing again for 10, 15 minutes. And then the next night he came back in eventually they started talking. She said this one exercise of just looking in her mirror and laughing and then having him do it had been the best time they had spent since they were together. And now things got mended. They're actually getting back together and there's a whole different story now. And they're actually, you know, back on track and the way they should be. But I say that because of course there's already love and stuff there. There was already caring and feeling there. And there, there's a pretty funny thing that happened actually, by the way, because she was like telling me the story. She was telling all of us a story. And while she was saying it, she was like, for the first time, I feel like I'm, and it was one of those things where I say something and she said something at the same time. And so we both said something, but what she said was going to learn to love him again. And what I said was going to let him hit it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's not funny. What's wrong with me? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, she sat there looking at the mirror, just laughing and it actually saved her marriage. Pretty cool. Okay. So the chemo cheer, I talked about this earlier. Um, what's the hero's name of the book? I think his name would be called the Milton uh, in the book, but he, um, he was doing this, you know, I'm going to chemo. Ha ha ha. And everyone started cracking up because he has chemo. He went to the hospital and he started doing the same thing. He did it with his family. He said, you know what? This ain't no thing guys. And anytime there'd be bad news or it looked like a prognosis wasn't good, or it looked like this was going to be something bad. He just started doing that. His whole family started doing the fake laughter too. The ha ha ha. Everyone would laugh. Pretty soon other patients that he met there would start laughing too. They're all, this is the Riley's children's hospital. This is like the cancer ward, you guys, for like, you know, kids that are going through underage people, not just kids, but young people that are going through, you know, things that you and me and their families are going through suffering that is just unimaginable, unimaginable, right? And here they are laughing, laughing it up, man, just cracking up, having the time of their lives. Pretty soon the nurses came in and said, what's so funny? And they <laughs> said, nothing, nothing. And when she walked in and she was sitting there, she told me when she was walking there, he kept laughing when they were, when she had him in a wheelchair going to the hospital. And she's like, hi, I'm here. I'm here for my son's chemo. And the nurse is like, oh, great. Why are we laughing? It's like, they immediately start laughing like, oh, okay, like, wow, these people are crazy. But then they start laughing too. And now it was something they were using the chemo chair, they call it now. It's spread throughout the entire, now he's, ta he's taught it to the nurses, the staff, and he's taught it to other kids as well. And they all do this, this thing of the fake laughter and it builds up. It's pretty cool, man. Uh, the laugh parachute. So this is how we deal with nervousness when calling. So when, if you get nervous about calling, just start laughing or just at, just start saying a knock. In any situation, if you don't know what to do, just say knock, knock. Everyone says who's there. We're all trained to say who's there. And if you don't know the joke, just come up with a joke on the spot. Talk about this before I got to cry. I got to hurry this up. We talked about this before using knock, knock jokes. We're asking people for knock, knock jokes. Hey, can you, before I go, I get really super nervous when I get, when I get around new people. Sometimes I have to tell them a knock, knock joke. Can I do that real quick before I let you go? Cause it really helped my confidence. And we have one of our heroes who doesn't, he is notorious for forgetting knock, knock jokes. So he'll be like, knock, knock. Like who's there? He's like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> he just hangs up the phone. So the laugh parachute is a way to, if you get nervous, how do you deal with your conversations? How do you deal with, um, how do you deal with having phone calls? You can always say, just start laughing. Just start laughing uncontrollably. Just if you ever get nervous, just start laughing and just keep laughing, keep going. The person's gonna be like, are you okay? What are you laughing about? <laughs> But you'll get through the conversation. So it's, that's a laugh parachute. And then if you get to the point, use a knock-knock joke or better yet, get them to tell you a knock-knock joke. So bad jokes, intentionally bad jokes are a great source of humor, actual laughs and compliance. So um, that's the, uh, like, you know, there's all kinds of knock-knock jokes that are terrible or just knock-knock and just come up with it at the moment. Just, you know, we do a lot of intentionally bad jokes. One of the things I always say, especially with kids, when, I, when someone I'm ignoring somebody, I'll be like, you know, he's like the cannibal. As soon as I say that, they're like, oh my gosh, cold shoulder, cold shoulder. Cold, like someone would be like, cold shoulder. Like, he's like the cannibal. As soon as I say that, like cold shoulder who showed up late for dinner you know why you know why and everyone's like cold shoulder cold shoulder like, does anybody know why and at this point everyone's like cold shoulder because all he's getting is the is the what is the what and everyone's like like everyone's screaming out cold shoulder and i'll be like so nobody knows nobody knows and every time it's a terrible joke but i always get the laugh i force the laugh it doesn't get old i keep going intentionally bad jokes are really good for compliance early bird laughs on the bank all right very simple way how do we go this is the same hero right who'd gone I actually did this we've had a few people doing it this is one who was doing it from the room on key Emo, basically wanting to move to Miami. Again, don't let your circumstances, your external stuff change where you want to be internally. If you've got a dream to go to Miami, even if you don't see it happening or nobody else sees it happening, it doesn't matter. Start doing deals in Miami. This is a quick way we do with the VIP group. Basically, you call a realtor up and any realtor that works with investors or has investment properties, we always say, hey, you know what? For your next investment property, if you send it to me a day before or right before you list it, I can send it to my investors and get an offer on it. Now, they're like, well, are you going to get the commission? No. Are you going to mark it up? No. Are you going to make money? No, I'm not. I'm not going to make any money. I'm just going to help you out. And what this allows you to do is to build your investor list and say, you know what? I've got 14, 15 investor realtors who send me deals a day before they're on the MLS or before they're on the MLS, before they're actually listed. Sometimes it might be like 10 PM and it's going to be listed that next morning. So it's important when you get an email from me that you rip it open. This is how you force yourself in people's A-list. We've talked about this before. It's really important to be on the A-list. The biggest, one of the biggest factors in how successful your business is, is how many people if you email and texted right now would open up your email. You're in their A-list, right? So we call up a couple of realtors, get some properties now. And you're doing this basically as a GXM because now you're getting 
trading properties a day or two before they're on the market and you're building your investor list, right? And your, your investors know they've got to move on these properties, right? Investors really easy. Just search for um, I buy homes blank area or sell my home fast area, right? And you've got all kinds of investors, more investors than you ever need. Get into a Facebook group, you get 100, 200 emails, right? A lot of these people are LCs, but you got to qualify them, talk to them on the phone and let them know, listen, when you get a property from me in this category, it's going to be, you got to move on it real quick because it's we're about to go on the market. It's not even on the market yet. I'm getting off market deals that everyone talks about, right? It's really easy to get off market deals. Basically did this in less than one day. And when you do this, it's very quick. You first, you're doing just as a GXM to get people addicted to the crack, right? And then you can go back. There's plenty of ways to make money. In this case, one of the investors came back and said, listen, I want to get on your list before anyone else. What do I have to do? Let me know about your deal. If I do a deal, I'll pay you. The guy did two deals. Somebody else did another deal. I think it was a total of three deals. Made 20 grand his first month in Indianapolis, but doing deals in Miami where nothing works, right? Miami, make it 20 grand your first month. A couple phone calls from a hospital bed, make it 20 grand your first month. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is just all through humor, through laughing. He was the one who kind of created the chemo cheer. And with that attitude, that atmosphere, he was able to go out and make 20 grand his first month in real estate in Miami while being in a hospital bed in Indianapolis. Amazing. It's bonkers. It's bonkers and brilliant. Okay. So check this out. You guys should be clear on this, right? This is the frequency of thought. When you're a dickhead, you're down here. Resentment, blame, limited, fear, anger. It's what happens when you're watching the news, right? The formula for an LC, focus on yourself, focus on the short term, focus on the lack of possibility and potential. That's where you're going to be. You're going to be down here shit balling like an asshole because you're not focusing on your frequency of thought. Take your frequency of thought, raise it to 30, 50 hertz. Go through my class on quantum physics. I talk about this. If I put a shower cap on you, I can measure this. This is super important, right? Because the formula for badassery, focus on others, focus on the long term, focus on the endless possibility potential. By having, you are at your best when you're full of gratitude, optimism, opportunity, courage, being unstoppable. You are a giant. Your, your challenges are tiny little anthills, right? The more optimism you see, the more optimism you see, the more um, unlimited potential you see, the more, uh, you know, uh, opportunities uh, multiply as they are seized, the more you feel that, that there's a world of just constant opportunity, nothing but endless opportunity and infinite gratitude. This moving up laughter alone will move you up, move your frequency of thought up the scale. And the better you do this, the more you think about something, the easier it becomes to think about. And the more you just live there, the more you do the, the, go to the, the how to make people laugh, the more you go to this class, the more you go to these exercises, the easier it'll be to raise your frequency and to live there, to live in high places. The skill of laughter and how it builds your business influence and compliance gaining. Uh, a note about the monies. Never said a single word. To, oh, this was Stephen King uh, on writing. Never said a single word down on paper with the thought of being paid for it. I have written because it fulfilled me. Maybe it paid off the mortgage on the house and got the kids through college, but those things were on the side. I did it for the buzz, for the buzz. I did it for the buzz. I did it here. Joy of the thing. And if you can do it for the joy, you can do it forever. Guys, this is all about creating joy, manufacturing joy until it is actual genuine joy, right? This is a God send and you can be a God send to people. Laugh more. Try the laugh experiments. Go through them. Please don't just sit there like an LC. Oh, I'll try it later. Awesome. No, you won't. Go through it. Because when you do it a couple of times, when you go to the fake laughter to get to real laughter a couple of times, it'll prime you and put you in a mode that is hard to describe. And it'll allow you to take on enormous, crazy, challenging things. Things like emo. Things like just looking at death and laughing. Laughing in the face of death. How amazing is that? We have people doing that now. Spread the love. Feel yourself rise. Focus on the tone and notice the impact on people. It is amazing. It is amazing. That is how you make people laugh.